Good evening, everybody. Um, this is our last Zoom meeting as a CSD board member. Um, and that's, I'm going to read instructions on how to make a public comment during the meeting, even though I looked and I don't see that there's any people, but just in case. At points in the meeting when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via the internet or the telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If you're participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. All public comments shall be addressed to the board of directors and limited to three minutes per speaker. The board of directors may choose to respond to comments or request that staff to respond at the conclusion of a public comment period. All right, so let's do a call to order and roll call. Oh, I guess I'm here. Here. Director Kilkenny. Here. Director Ruggieri. Here. And Director Shea. Present. All right, let's take a look at the agenda. Are there any questions about the agenda as is? Eric? Move to adopt. Perfect. Uh, is there a second? Right here. All right. Um, there is no members of the public. Oh, no, there are members of the public. Is there any questions from the public about the agenda? No hands. No hands. Okay, so let's move on to the consent calendar. Um, so is there any questions from anybody or on the board? No comments? Eric, anything you want to make sure we looked at? No? No, uh, it's standard. Okay, it looks pretty standard when I went line by line. All right, is there any questions from the public? You have no hands. All right, let's move on. Is there? Uh, let's move to adopt. Yes. No, a motion approve. to approve. A motion to approve. Sorry, I'm moving approve. fast here. That's because there's no interruptions. Is there a motion to approve the consent? I motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. I got you. And I got you. All right. Do we need a vote on approving it? All right, so let's go ahead and do a vote. All discussions have been completed. I am going to take a vote. Board President Oiserman. Aye. Director Case. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Ruggieri. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. All right, we are going to move on to item D, public comment. Open time for items that are not on the agenda right now. Uh, just a reminder, speakers are asked to address comments to the board and limit comments to three minutes. Speakers may comment only on non-agenda items within the subject matter of the district jurisdiction of the district. The board may not take action on consider or debate items not on the agenda except under narrow circumstances meeting statutory requests. Response to comments on non-agenda items will be limited to factual information or clarifying questions from staff or board at the conclusion of the public comment period. The president may refer the matter to staff or for future meeting agendas. Is there any raised hands from the public? I do not see any raised hands for public comment. Okay, then. Moving on, holy schmoly, to line E. We are at District Matters. Um, we are looking at the fiscal year 2022-2023 second quarter profit and loss budgets to actual reports. Eric, would you like to say something about sure. this? Sure. Um, you know, I gave you guys a little bit of a lead in here. This Q2 isn't the most uh, exciting of all of these, but it just shows that we are doing what we kind of expected to be doing at this point in time. Looking at this from a uh, kind of bigger picture standpoint, obviously the big revenues that came in were ad valorem property taxes and the special taxes. Uh, as far as ad valorem, we're actually trending ahead of budget on that. So I am expecting that to come in higher uh, by the time the fiscal year ends than what is currently budgeted. Um, we've so far received in total net about 1.286 million for ad valorem property taxes and 933,000 in net special assessments, i.e. special taxes like cart tax, fire tax, um, which is what we expected for that at this point in time. Um, total cash balance as of December 31st uh, in our general fund was stated at uh, just a little over 6.1 million. Um, of that total, 500,000 currently held as board designated reserves uh, and approximately 96,000 of that total is designated for MWPA uh, allowable expenditures um, in wildfire prevention authority. Uh, when you take those funds into account, um the net cash balance is about 5.523 million. Um, that's actually an increase of almost 950,000 uh, in revenue or total cash, sorry, cash on hand uh, over the same point in time last fiscal year. So even though recognizing we had a lot of large expenditures, uh, some of which were covered through the use of a, uh, of a line of credit or a loan for the building facility, uh, we're still trending in the right direction as far as revenue exceeding expenditure by a pretty decent number. So I feel good about that, um, especially once we get to the next agenda item. Uh, <laughs> as always, uh, you know, this is just simply a reflection of cash flow. So, you know, we do have a uh, Unfunded accrued liabilities that continue to grow. We do have uh, foreseen capital expenditures that we are anticipating. So uh, you know, all that is important to keep in mind when you look at this, but it is still a positive trend. Um, also, our OPEB trust fund as of the end of Q2, uh, December 31st, um, I'm sorry, that should say 2022, that's a typo on my part, had a stated balance of $516,000. Uh, looking forward for the next quarter that we're uh, almost halfway through right now, this is when the, we'll open up our rec program registration next month. That's also going to represent a significant cash inlay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, in January, we also received payment towards our agreement with the county to provide fire protection services to CSA 13. That's actually already come in. So that's a little over 300,000 that's come in on that. Um, I don't have it immediately in front of me, but if I'm doing the math, it's about 330,000 that we received on that. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to bring up is we actually just uh, yesterday got our Q2 allocations for interest in our county fund. Um, and we actually pulled in about $9,900 in interest just for Q2, which tells me that the county's investments are back to bearing a little bit better fruit than they had been considering last year, we really didn't pull much at all. So we have total uh, investment income just through the first two quarters of a little over 13,000 um, when we kind of budgeted very conservatively for that at 5,000. So we're going to come well over um, and that's a good sign that's getting a little bit more to pre-pandemic uh, type of returns that we were receiving not quite there yet but it's getting a lot better on that front um, with that said i'm happy to field any questions um, all the statements are there for you both district total um, and then by department as well as a little um, it's a very small summary sheet because there really wasn't a lot of great variants or anything i thought that needed a little extra explanation uh, following those in the summary notes so any questions happy to field them uh, the best i can with what's in front of me can, can i just like so understand better the ad valorem if we're seeing more there does that just mean houses are more expensive more more homes are being sold uh, yes I, I i tend to budget fairly conservatively on that the big one if you're looking at the actual PL statement and you see the very top line of revenue that says prop tax current secured that's obviously the bigger one the other ones are much smaller underneath it and they kind of ebb and flow a little bit more but the current secured tends to grow 
you know, anywhere from two to five good years, even as high as 6%. Um, a lot of it has less to do with the, you know, the house costs going up and more to do with, you know, kind of older houses that have been on the, uh, off the market for many, many years, maybe finally getting sold. So they're being reassessed at a much higher value yeah. than what the current assessment is on it. But this is all trending well. Again, I try to remain fairly conservative on this. Um, and I don't have the number immediately in front of me, but I want to say we're probably going to exceed that number by anywhere from 80 to 90,000 over what we budgeted. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Just for the current security. Yeah, that well, the things things are kind of leveled out now with this. Yeah, and houses how they calculate it. Market, yeah. I'm not an um, expert in it. Um, the bottom line is it's kind of a countywide aggregate. It's not just yeah. houses that are in our area, so the growth kind of goes across through the entire okay. county, um, which you know is can be challenging in, in some areas. But uh, I, I just look at historical trends as I go through this and try to uh, follow whatever guidance the Department of Finance might put out as they go through for their project projections as well. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? All right, um, and I look forward to having that updated as we continue on through the year because. As you said, it's Q2, but it's not 50% of what we do and what we get. Um, all right, do you want to move on to your district manager report with the exciting fun news? Sure. Um, no sarcasm here at uh, all. Yeah. And just to be clear, um, you have no members of the public on right now, so you have no public comment for the uh, Yeah, I noticed, the I noticed that. I noticed I have it up as attendees, which is why I did that. But uh, I'm, I'm just saying it for the record. Okay, um, for the district manager report, uh, yeah, let's just start with the creep bank situation and then, uh, <laughs> any questions or comments that are through there. Obviously, I tried to give you a fairly detailed synopsis of where we stand. Uh, I've communicated with each of you uh, since this event has happened too. Um, you know, from a big picture, I have, you know, we have more unanswered questions than I have uh, answered questions still at this point. The one thing I can say, and I certainly got to thank Luke because he's jumped right on board with this as well, is we've brought all the needed parties uh, out to get them engaged with this project. Uh, Miller Pacific Engineering Group, from a civil engineering perspective, uh, we brought out a gentleman named Matt Smeltzer who serves as both an environmental hydrologi hydrologic um, consultant. He's, an, he's a certified engineer on this too. Uh, and we've already started with the very first thing we need to do, which is just getting a, a good survey of the entire area, topographic mapping of the entire area done. Um, so I've already engaged that. Firm. They've already started the process. Tomorrow morning, um, we are scheduled to have people come out and just do some emergency mitigation, which is going to be covering the uh, impacted areas in plastic sheeting tomorrow to try to reduce any future surface water from weighing this down and pushing more material down. Um, and then yesterday, I formally submitted uh, and got confirmation that it was received our uh, request for public assistance that goes through both Cal OES and FEMA. So we are certainly on the radar for that. In fact, I um, had a call with somebody from Cal OES already today. That does not mean that this project is going to qualify, uh, but we will word everything very strongly and make it very clear that this presents a direct and immediate risk to facility should anything further happen. And when I say we don't know if it qualifies, um, the area that is infected is what's uh, infected impacted is what's known as non-improved. So it was you know, mostly the hillside and it got up very close to the pool pump house facility, but it didn't actually do any damage yet, or at least nothing that anybody has been able to notice to the pool facility. FEMA primarily looks at damage to improved facilities. Uh, so we're going to be trying very hard to make the case that this is a direct threat and any more potential land movement could put this uh, at immediate risk and hazard, uh, if not causing damage at that point. So hopefully they will accept this as a claim. Uh, for those who were around in 2017 was the last kind of really large storms we had through here and we had some damaged areas. We filed for FEMA then um, and this was one of the areas that we wanted to do uh, kind of preventive maintenance to. There was some level of land movement, but nothing like this. It uh, And they denied it. So we're, uh, now that we are where we are, and if you saw the pictures that I sent out, um, I think it makes a pretty strong case that this is directly impacting a critical facility. Um, that said, again, I'm, 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 uh, this is going to be an arduous process getting through this. It's going to be expensive. It's going to take time. It's going to involve every single regulatory agency that you can think of. But uh, I will say, just to kind of pat ourselves on the back a little bit here, um, from the moment that, uh, that we, we, know, we identified this, we've moved really quickly in bringing in the right people. I mean, within two days, we had the civils out. By the end of the week, um, we had Matt Smeltzer out. And uh, for those of you who might remember, when we had to do a storm drain repair over in the uh, Panhandle area, probably three or four years ago now, uh, Matt was the consultant we worked with. He helps. He's incredibly knowledgeable with all the environmental regulatory applications. Not to mention, he's a certified engineer, hydrologist, uh, and he will be uh, you know, kind of really laying out the plans for work that needs to happen directly in the creek channel. Uh, and he's already kind of brainstorming a lot of ideas. The surveyor, the uh, Miller Pacific on the civil side, and then uh, with Matt uh, Smeltzer on the fluvial side, he, uh, they all have worked on projects together. So they're already, all three of them, in very good communication with each other and in very good communication with both Luke and myself. So on that, I'm actually pleased that we were able to get people, get the right people, and uh, start working on this uh, immediately, for lack of a better term, for the instant that we noticed what was happening back there. All right. Thank you, let's, Eric. Let's field any questions or concerns on that one first, and then I'll go to the rest. Anybody have any questions? I have one, but I'll wait for others. And I should actually, if Luke has anything else to add, um, he's been intimately involved in this from the moment we saw it too. So I, Luke, if I missed anything here, please chime in. No, I, I think that was a good assessment, Eric. Thank you. Um, I would just echo that um, I've also been extremely impressed with the response we've had. As soon as we contacted some of these uh, firms, you know, civil engineering firms and the different individuals to come out and take a look, we got immediate responses. People not saying, we'll get back to you sometime next week, but I'll be there in 10 minutes. This is the yeah. kind of response we're getting. And so uh, I found that very encouraging that the, the different groups uh, that are working with in these different uh, companies and, and you know, organizations um, are here to help and, and see this as like, we want to help you preserve your, your infrastructure and facility and we'll do whatever we can to help it out. We see this as an emergency. So that's been um, super encouraging in an otherwise daunting situation. So I um, just wanted to reiterate that and, and say that that gives us, you know, little glimmers of optimism in an otherwise very uh, uh, dire situation. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Luke. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Eric or Luke? And Luke? I think my question would be, um, like, given what we have right now, obviously there's no impact on the pool operations, but obviously, I mean, I guess it's hard to predict, but you guys are feeling good about the pool season right now, if, if nothing else were to move? Um, well, no impact, in my opinion, is a little too strong of a term. I think there is going to be some level of impact in terms of pool operations. The pool is operational. Everything within the pump house checks out, so there's no reason to, quote, unquote, shut down the pool. Um, I will say, you know, where this happened is kind of by that hilltop picnic area that we typically rent out. Um, that area is going to have to be reconfigured a little bit and moved. So Luke and, uh, and JPR are working on that and looking at everything, so that's great. Um, and then as we get into work time on this, that's certainly going to impact the p
uh, you know, towards the end of pool season, because uh, we're really not going to be able to do much until the water is at its ultimate lowest point in the creek, uh, because they're going to basically have to dam the creek and divert water uh, through piping and everything else to do the work that we're looking at doing. Oh, wow. oh yeah, no, this is it's gonna this, be big. this is a big one. So that said, we do not we are not currently in a situation, Chris, that we have to shut down the pool or radically adjust operations. Okay. Uh, it could get there. Uh, you know, we have another you know series of atmospheric rivers. Yeah. Uh, that's going to get scary. And uh, once work starts, and you know, there's going to be crews back there. We're going to put up some temporary fencing along the uh, top of the hillside there and everything else. So to say no impact is is I, not a correct term. There's going to be right. some impact, but uh, I believe we'll still be able to run the pool. Uh, and for a good majority of the season, weather holding out for us yes. and no additional land movement, uh, significant anyway. Um, I think we should be okay, Luke. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think uh, we plan to run all of our normal programs, and um, we just there might be a, a part of the uh, complex that turns into a construction site later in the season. Um, but we'll do our best to make that work. And if anything, like our grass area would potentially be reduced. Um, you know, we'll have some fencing up, and there might be some noise, like Eric said. But uh, that best case scenario, that's the impact would be it's a little smaller uh, up there, and, and there's some noise. Um, so, and that's assuming that you know everything holds through the rest of the winter. So, uh, but we have no plans to, to reduce any programming for capacity or anything like that at this time. Cool. Yeah, I just really appreciate you guys getting on that, and, and uh, man. Never boring. <laughs> yeah, you know, and until we really start to get some firm plans, I'm just I'm hesitant to even throw out a number on what I think this is going to wind up costing. And obviously, if FEMA uh, OES picks it up, then it could get reimbursed, you know, up to 93.5 percent of total cost. But um, I'll tell you right now, uh, you know, once you factor in everything, the work itself, the all of the uh, pre-construction work that's going to need to happen, just in terms of uh, designing and civil and everything else, um, if this thing comes in a, a penny less than 300 thousand, I'll be shocked. Okay. I mean, I guess I have a question of if, it, if we have like normal rain, like we've had, then the river's not, the creek's not going to gush. But if we have any atmospheric weather or any hard rain with a couple of inches coming down over a couple of days, then the creek's going to rush and then we can have some mm -hmm. issues. It could become an issue. Uh, you know, one of the bigger issues is there's, you know, some very large trees that are fairly low on the creek yeah. bank, one of whom uh, being a very large old oak tree. If that thing continues to get undercut, and if that were to fall, uh, that could have a an impact on the water flow as well. All of that is kind of right there. It's just, it's a dense area. So it's, there's uh, nothing that we can do right now to shore things up. So it'll be a bummer. Okay. If anything else comes down, A for the yeah, we, we have the, the creek and, and beef the cost for us. Right, but. well, right. And uh, the people who are working on it, you know, from a, a consultant and a contractor perspective at this point, are, they're the right people. I'm okay. very good that we, we got ourselves the right. And, and Matt Smelter, especially, uh, he's well renowned amongst people who have to deal with creek work. And in fact, he came to us, um, you know, years ago when we first used him as a direct uh, re uh, reference from the Resource Conservation District, um, okay. you know, and their creek person and specialist. So but we, we've got the right people on the job, but it's going to take some time. You know, they need to see all the topos. They need to do their calculations. They, uh, you know, I mean, it's science when you get into this engineering. So uh, we're, we're, the steps that we need to take are being taken, and, and they're being taken as quickly as we can make them happen. Okay. Um, I guess my only other question would be, do we need to put up some surveillance or something so that we know like on the weekends or something if there's movement? No, no, there's really not too much that we can do on that standpoint. Okay. I mean, you know, we're constantly kind of checking on it and then pool season starts before you know it here too. Yeah. And it'll be open on the weekends uh, and so on and so forth. So, okay. and, you know, if there's rains, you know, I, I live a mile and a half away. I, I, and that's how we have been able to kind of pinpoint this. Yeah. I, I absolutely looked at this area, you know, towards the end over what was that uh, MLK weekend. Um, and none of this had happened yet. And that was when it was the big water flows and yeah. everything else. This, this was a gradual overtime thing that as it got undercut and undercut and undercut, it, it slowly just, started to loosen yeah. the stuff up top until something gave way. And that kind of started the domino effect. Yeah. Those of you who have seen it, you can kind of look at it and see how it kind of collapsed and towed in. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else have any other questions from the board? <clears throat> um, I'm going to say, are there any members of the public? But I see that there's nobody, but I'm asking. You have no public comment. No public comment. All right. So moving on. Mo moving and, on. Well, if I go through the rest of my report here really, oh, really quickly, yes. I'll try to make it quick. Um, this is more of an informational item, but I wanted to put it out there. Um, a, because LAFCO asked us if we would, and B, just to see if there's anybody who's interested. Uh, the LAFCO board is made up of several different uh, elected officials throughout the county from different types, cities, towns, county. Uh, they also have seats specific to special district. Um, they have uh, opportunity for election to a regular seat and an alternate seat on LAFCO. Um, they uh, meet the second Thursday of every even month, I believe at 7 p.m. Um, if anybody is potentially interested in LAFCO, A, I'm happy to put you in touch with their executive officer who can better answer any questions they might have. Uh, and if you let me know we have time, I would put this as a formal item on the agenda for next month uh, because their deadline is March 31st and uh, officials have to be nominated uh, by a vote of their respective governing body of the board. So if one of you wanted to do this, then we put it on the agenda and have a formal nomination and vote for it. Um, so please just let me know if you're at all interested in it. Um, and then just other items of note, uh, audit uh, work is coming along fine. Uh, we've submitted what they need. Uh, they are just working on trying to get the whole report completed. They were uh, able and did complete and submit our state controller's expenditure report, which we have to submit every year, and that came well within the deadline. So audit should probably be done within the next week or two, uh, I'm assuming. Um, and I'm expecting drafts of their report probably within the next week or so, but it'll go on to the next agenda for you all. Uh, place structure replacement project, um, that's going to be kicking up here really soon too. So that's going to be talked about a lot more in the PNR commission. So we're going to start moving with that uh, with the hope of being able to get an RF put together in late spring for construction that'll happen towards end of summer, uh, early fall. And then finally, uh, it's already budget season. So that's another thing we'll be working on around here is just starting to piece together the budget for next fiscal year. Thank you, Eric. Anybody have any questions about the LAFCO or the audit play structures and operating budget? Okay, I have a quick question. Do we need to look at, just because we just talked about it, uh, do we need to look at the creek area right near the play structure? Is there, I know it's just replacement of the play structure, but do we need to look over there? And as we're replacing stuff, if we're changing the configuration, should we be shoring up those? No, no, okay. no not for this type of equipment. Okay, I just want to make sure because no, we're not we're not impacting any land. We're just removing it. It's it's okay. exempt. Okay, just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, and then just to confirm for anybody who is interested in the LAFCO, we nominate, and then is there an election process, or yes. you automatically? Yeah, so you guys will be seeing that later down the line, assuming they have more candidates than they have spots. Uh, once you are nominated, it goes to a vote of all special districts in
and I see none. Anybody from the public would like to comment? There is no raised hands, so we will move on to the draft minutes to item F, uh, draft minutes of the fire commission. Uh, I would turn that over to Kathleen if she's yeah. Kathleen, she Kathleen, do you have anything you want to say? No, you're gonna you put yourself on mute, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you took off the video. Like you really have nothing to say. Okay, <laughs> Kathleen, to report. No, um, I really don't. I think that it's hard to report on this one because it's very different than Park and Rec. Like we come together, old timers talk, and the chief gives his report. So I think Eric can touch more on the report than I can. Okay. Yeah, the minutes are there you can kind of see what was requested for future um, and the chief's report is very similar um, seeing as how the fire commission meeting was just last week so uh, the chief report that you have in front of you is very similar to what the DNR, or the fire commission talked about okay so when they're asking for requests on the new housing development is that to figure out if we need to change something for our fire department is that why no uh, mostly this one actually came from ron marinoff uh, yeah. because when you know when there's new structures new builds um, you know the parcel taxes kick in so he was looking right. at this more from a revenue stamp uh, fiscal impact standpoint okay. on how much additional revenue would be received but we just talked a little bit fire. Okay. right and we did talk a little bit about you know the full scope of kind of what has been proposed in the housing element and uh, you know if all that got built that could certainly have an impact on operations but we're ways 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 away from that even being a possibility so okay. all right is any other board members have any questions uh, is there anybody from the member of the public who would like to ask questions about the draft minutes? Yeah, no, no uh, public comment. All right. Did you want to, did the chief give you anything extra? I mean, we all read the chief's report. Uh, the only thing I would touch on here is just a little bit on the recruitment side of things uh, okay. in a little piece of uh, good news for us anyway. Um, our firefighter paramedic, Wills Kelly, who actually left our agency uh, a little over a month ago, uh, will be returning to our agency effective on Thursday um, as a full-time firefighter paramedic. So it was just, uh, I think he was having some uh, misgivings about it as it was leading up to it and uh, as, you know, reached out to me and I have already met and conferred with IAFF in terms of bringing him back. Um, so he has been rehired. We have one vacant, which is great, by the way. Um, Wills Kelly is an excellent firefighter paramedic and an even better person. So to have him back and have uh, the kind of commitment that I think we're going to get out of him coming back here and him realizing that he just really, really, really enjoyed working here and working with uh, all of his colleagues and in this community, I, I expect Wills to be around for a while, a long time. So that is a, a tremendous uh, benefit to the district and to the community. So we're really happy to have Wills back. Um, we actually had an interview this morning, so that process is still going um, for the ninth position, uh, the third firefighter paramedic. Um, again, applications aren't coming in as much as I really kind of hope that they would, uh, but it is out there. It is being seen, um, and I have another couple avenues that I'm going to explore in terms of getting out there uh, the news as well. Um, so it's not quite as critical being down two people as uh, now just to being down one, but we're, we're moving forward on that process um, as quickly as we can as applications uh, received allow. All right, any comments? I just want to say welcome back, Wills Kelly. We're happy to have you back. And we are pretty special. I'm glad that you're decided to stay. Um, okay, yeah, let us know how the recruitment's going for the last position. All right, I will open it up to the public again for comment. Can I just jump in on one oh, thing? Oh, sorry. I, and I know we don't have any public, so nobody else is going to hear this. Um, but I just wanted to acknowledge um, uh, Battalion Chief Paul Crimmins passing. Um, he was a, a great member of our fire department. I remember him as a kid. Um, great guy. I actually bumped into him over the years. Um, and uh, just really appreciative to, uh, to him for what he did for our community. Um, and just wanted to say I'm, I'm sorry for his family. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Chris. Uh, they'll actually be hosting a, a celebration of life for him here on Monday, February 20th, which is a holiday. Um, so expect to see uh, you know, probably quite a few people coming through. Um, several fire engines. I know they're going to use the ladder trucks to put up some flags and things. So uh, uh, I did not know him personally, but I've never heard anybody say anything other than what uh, Chris just said, that he was just an excellent person and a, and a tremendous uh, firefighter. Yeah, sorry. I didn't say anything. All right. Um, anything else? All right. And no public. So we are going to move on to Parks and Recreation Matters, specifically looking at the draft minutes. Chris, do you have anything right. you want to say? Jump in my notes here. Um, and obviously anybody who was there, correct me if, I'm, if I missed something. Um, I think our, probably the biggest thing was um, we talked about bringing Ryan Madden onto the commission, and I know that was part of our packet here. Um, personally, I think Ryan would make a phenomenal commissioner. Um, and Michael Banesh has taken on the position of commission chair um, for the next year, and that was super nice of him. Appreciate you, Michael. Um, let's see. Just kind of an update on some projects. Um, you guys, I think we're all in the loop on the fact that um, the maintenance facility, which we'll probably be talked about in a little bit, um, is totally up and running and, and great. Um, there was a small issue with some, when we had the huge series of storms, a little bit of um, drainage issue, but I think uh, that has been mitigated and already figured out. The trail pathway made it through extremely well. Um, there's nothing left on the punch list. Everything is moving forward with that. I know there were some public questions regarding that today. I don't know if we want to address that. Um, majority of the landscape is in place. There's some work to be done on the horseshoe pits um, and the vents for Jimbo Juarez has now kind of becomes a, a target project for that area of the park. Um, the waterway trail updates. Um, Eric had talked about um, the, the research and reports that have to be done. So he's working on that to put us in a place where then we could go out with some public outreach and really start walking that path of deciding whether we want to do that project or not. As Eric already mentioned, the playground redo is now a focal project, um, probably in addition to the Creekside uh, re replenishing. Um, bathroom research has been informal so far, but um, uh, Luke and Eric talked about a place, kind of there's a single place that to them, if we were to do it, makes sense. Um, again, I think a lot of these projects maybe take a backseat to us, making sure we take care of the, the creek and the uh, pool pump room first. Um, I'm sure Luke is going to talk about the ramp up for the summer with everybody. Um, and I think. I think that was it. Boys, what did I miss? No, you got it all. Uh, the only thing I would add in is I would just say, and of course, Luke, in case you think I missed something, but the, uh, on that Miller Creek waterway trail, I'd actually really, my intention was to be able to get a little bit more information to you all for uh, this meeting in terms of, you know, I've been able to reach out uh, and receive some estimates on some of the environmental uh, reporting or reviews that need to happen out there uh, as part of the CEQA compliance, which is, you know, a biological survey, a, a wildlife survey, um, and then a cultural resources survey. So I have some estimated costs on what that'll cost us, and I wanted to kind of put everything together for you all. Um, but needless to say, the last two weeks have taken a sharp left turn, uh, and I just wasn't able to get that in time for this. Um, but I will put that together next month uh, because I'm really kind of going to be looking for, a, you know, here's the next investment that, you know, and we're not talking about a lot of money, probably less than $10,000 for everything. But if that is 
something that we want to pursue um, because we're not gonna be able to move that project forward until we have that work done uh, in any scope, shape, or form. So um, and with you know, 150,000 in seed money that's been uh, uh, done to, um, we did record that agreement. Um, and I can talk more about that a little bit, I guess, uh, coming up, but uh, that agreement has been fully executed, um, notarized and recorded with the assessor recorder. So that's already against um, the okay. developer's property. And, and Eric, I think one thing I may have skipped was, it's your your belief that um, if we choose to as a board go forward with those research, the research and the reports that have to be done, you would like to do that before we reach out for public comment because many of those that report and research will probably answer a lot of comments or questions from the public. Exactly. Yeah, you're gonna bring out a couple different biologists. Sometimes it's the same biologist, but somebody will do a wildlife survey, somebody will do a sensitive species and plant survey, um, and then obviously on the cultural side too. So that'll kind of speak to um, potential impacts uh, from an environmental standpoint uh, when it comes to this trail. So yes, I'd like to have all that information ready and done, so that way uh, when you start to do the public outreach, you're gonna start getting questions, and, and that information can be incorporated directly into the outreach. I think it's a great idea, so that you don't have people asking questions that you can't even answer. Right. I do know that some of the families have some questions about the wildlife piece. Mm -hmm. um, would it make sense to not to be able to answer their questions, but to at least to gather their concerns so that the biologist could speak to that, uh, like specifically potentially in their report? Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, uh, yeah, just, it would hurt. Yeah, yeah, just have them reach out to Eric and let him know. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, perfect. Yeah, we can share those concerns and ask that, it, that, that they be addressed. No, I mean, no reason to have you relay. Broken telephone is never fun. Oh, no, no, no. That is yeah. not, not my point. Yeah. I, think, I think just by them being able to express their concerns, that, that walks a good path. Okay. Whether we choose to do it or not, at least we know their concerns are being directly considered and, um, and responded to. Right. Perfect. All right. Any other questions from anybody for Chris? I will open it up for the public. You have no public comments. All right. So then let's move on to. Item two, which is appointment of Park and Recreation Commissioner for term ending in December 31st, 2024. And that would be, Eric, do you want to? Uh, yeah, you know, Ryan uh, Madden has been, uh, and his, his entire family has just been very involved in the entire district in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, from the schools to Water Devils to sports to everything, they're just uh, they're just a wonderful, wonderful family. Uh, I, I think all of their kids have worked for us or still do at some point in time, um, and they're outstanding. Just a great family. Uh, Ryan had expressed an interest in potentially joining with the Park and Rec. He actually sat in on the last meeting um, and participated in it, which was great. And then he submitted a letter that you see in front of him. Staff recommendation on this is to appoint uh, Ryan Madden to the regular uh, vacant regular seat on the commission, effective immediately for a term expiring in December of 2024. All right. Does anybody have any questions, any comments about this? I would just reiterate that I think Ryan would be a great guy to do this. I think it's got a unique position too because Karen used to be on PNR with me a million years ago. And so I think he already has a good sense of what it is and the historical aspect of it too. All right. Is there a do we motion? You need a motion. In a okay. Second. Is there any motion? I, I motion to nominate Ryan Madden for Park and Rec Commission. I second. Right. Lisa, did you have a question or were you just trying to get a second? I was going to second. <laughs> You're too slow. You're too slow. You're way out of the valley for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it must be my connectivity. <laughs> and you have no members of the public, so you can go straight to a vote. So All right. Let's go ahead. Tiffany, can you lead us in a vote, please? Lord President Weiserman. Aye. Director Hayes. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Ruggieri. Aye. And Director Shea. Oh, hardly aye. Awesome. Welcome to the team, Mr. Madden. Okay, we are going to move on to number three, authorizing to execute encroachment agreement with Oak Senior Living LLC to allow for grading and drainage placement on Marinwood open space lands. It, we're going to vote to approve this after we discuss. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to give you a little in, lead in here. I know we've talked about this um, both at a PNR level uh, somewhat as well as uh, some mentions in this board. Um, you know, without going into the technical specifications here, what I can tell you is, um, you know, they originally submitted the plans to us for review. Uh, I had a very well trusted civil engineer review them. He had a couple comments on them. They responded to those comments. Um, and right now we're comfortable with the plans. I'll also say I've spoken directly with the county DPW land use person who's assigned to this project. She actually thinks that this is a project enhancement that uh, makes sense for all parties. It actually provides a more stable environment for the adjacent open space. Um, the agreement was drafted by our legal counsel. Uh, they've seen it. They know what it is in terms of uh, the developer party goes. And it does put them, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of on the hook for all future maintenance and or repairs into perpetuity. Uh, and once again, this will be recorded against the property. So if they ever sell the property, whoever buys it inherits this agreement as well. Thank you for putting that in there. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my recommendation is to authorize it. I, to me, I think this is a win-win-win all the way around uh, for both the, our agency, for their um, firm, as well as the uh, as well as the community in general, I think makes the whole thing look better. It does not impact the trail project should that move through. Um, and then the other thing that I would uh, say on this is I know it's kind of come up when this has been talked about in the past, not by the board or by staff, but by some members of the public stating that, you know, we should, uh, you know, either charge them for this or, you know, attach a fee to it. Uh, what I will say is, you know, this facility is going to be annexed into our district. They're going to be paying taxes into, as long as that facility is there um, into our district, both special taxes and property taxes. I don't feel personally that, you know, kind of dinging them for an impact fee just to get us to agree to this is a, uh, for lack of a better term, very ethical move. Um, they've been very good to work with. They've so far been good neighbors. Uh, and I look forward to this facility hopefully being built because I think it's much needed. It is. Okay. Um, any questions from the board about this? Any comments from the public? All right, then. Um, I make a motion to approve. Should we have a second? A second. <laughs> and then, you got it. Right. And then to be clear, what you're doing is you're authorizing me to execute this agreement and then record it. All right, so um, yeah. do we, you can vote. we need to vote. Yeah. So we're voting to go ahead and approve for Eric to go ahead and execute this. All right, everybody? Go ahead, Tiffany. Board President Wiserman. Aye. Director Pace. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Ruggieri. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. Thanks. All right, moving on forward. We're going to go look at the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. Luke, take it oh, away. Okay. Thanks, Yvonne. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. On, what was that? Happy Valentine's, oh, Day. Valentine's apologize, Day. Apologize apologize to your wife for us. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I will. Don't worry. What about Eric's wife? Oh, I already told Eric earlier today, oh, and I'm sorry okay. about all this. I actually brought um, chocolate because I felt bad for everybody. So. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, yeah, just a few notes on my on my report. Um, keep an eye out for the, the Marine Review. Uh, our spring summer catalog is, is currently live up on our website, and you can find that digitally, but um, hard copies will be mailed out in the next uh,
Uh, we're excited for that to come out and for the registrations to start pouring in. Uh, summer camp registration opens up on March 13th for Marinewood residents and the 16th for everybody else. And so um, we're just getting everything ready for that, uh, making sure all of our links work, making sure all of our information is correct. And um, we, we've got like a, a kind of cool trainer uh, registration site that we use to sort of test everything before we, we put it live to make sure that it's all going to work. Um, registration is like a really big, uh, a big uh, to do, as you, a lot of you know, and um, it's a, it takes a lot of bandwidth. And so we actually we actually purchase extra bandwidth from our registration um, site provider on, on that, that morning to make sure we have enough capacity to handle all of the traffic and registration. So, so we're sure everything's going to work well and that there's not going to be issues and everyone can get into the camps and, and swim lessons and everything that they need. So we're gearing up for that and we're, we're looking forward to that. Uh, we also uh, have the pool memberships currently open, and um, the pool's going to open up on April 3rd to the public, but we're going to uh, open up for the Marinewood Water Devils um, on March 1st, so we're excited about that. We're getting ready at the pool, but um, pool memberships are currently on sale, and we're starting to market those. Um, our upcoming special event is our annual uh, Raise a Glass Wine Tasting event, which is taking place on March 4th, uh, so we're making sure everything's in place for that. Um, it's going to feature, I think we have 10 wineries this year. Uh, we've got live music and some good food, so we're looking forward to that. I hope you all can make it Saturday, March 4th from 2 to 5 p.m. Um, kind of the biggest thing, I should have started with this, but I'm going to um, sort of end with it for the recreation part of my report. Uh, we finally filled our vacant recreation supervisor position, um, and we just thought it would be easy just to, like, you know, rehire the guy that was in it before. So um, we're really, really happy to welcome John Paul Kessler back uh, as our recreation supervisor. Um, some uh, circumstances changed for him, and, and it just actually made sense for him to be able to come back and resume his post, and we are um, very excited to have him back. So he is officially back in the office and picked up right where we left off and is um, running full steam, getting everything ready to start the pool season and uh, a bunch of our new adult recreation classes and a bunch of our special events. And so um, we're, we're just really excited to have our team made whole again, and it was uh, the best possible scenario to get somebody back that knows uh, Marinewood, knows, knows the team, and um, that we love working with. So that was just a, a really wonderful happenstance that we were able to um, to make that happen and those circumstances converge. So uh, welcome back to John Paul. Um, happy to have him. Uh, we're also uh, starting to recruit and uh, advertise and interview for our uh, spring and summer part-time positions for both the pool and the camps. And so um, we're getting applicants. We've got a lot of uh, lifeguard training classes that we scheduled this spring to, to get lifeguards on staff. And those are filling up. We're actually almost full for the first two classes yeah. and filling up for the third class. So um, we're looking to um, have a really solid staff for both the pool and the camps this summer. And we're excited about that. But um, it's a long, long season of interviews and, uh, and applications. So, uh, But we've started that. It's going well uh, so far. On our park maintenance, uh, my park maintenance side of, of the report, um, Eric uh, talked about our big issue at the pool complex with the, the kind of landslide erosion issue. Um, I'm not going to touch too much on that, but just to say that the park staff um, has been taking a couple measures to prep the area for um, the, the first phase of attention to that area. So um, it's it's directly behind our hillside picnic area that we rent out throughout the pool season. Um, we did move a lot of the big heavy planters um, away from the compromised area, and we're hoping we can uh, create a slightly smaller but still usable picnic area this summer. We're still working on that. Um, and so we moved, moved some of those planters to reduce the area and get it far away from, um, from the compromised spot. Uh, we also uh, found that there were some irrigation lines that had been um, pulled out and, and compromised by the slide. And so uh, we capped all those and are rerouting that irrigation uh, to make that still work and make sure that water doesn't pour into the uh, the landslide site when we finally turn the sprinklers back on. So we got all that figured out and um, we'll be putting up some fencing to make sure that the, uh, the dangerous area is um, completely uh, off limits and that no one can get back there and, and get hurt and fall in. So um, the staff's uh, working on that. We're working with all the different uh, companies and agencies that, that are uh, attending to this area. We'll make sure that we you know plan that all correctly and make sure that the pool complex is safe for all of our users and all of our staff um, starting this spring. So we're uh, working on that and we'll have more information about that in the, in the coming weeks. Um, as far as the uh, update on the parks maintenance facility, the staff has fully moved in. It's fully functional. Everyone is ecstatic to be in the new building. It's lovely. It's uh, it's heated, it's dry, and they're able to, to, to work in there. It's been really nice, especially with all the torrential downpours we had last month. Um, it's, it's been a really nice place for them to, to get their work done. It's nice to finally have uh, a place that, that's big enough and, and safe to work in. So the staff um, morale is at an all-time high, and everyone's just really excited to be in the new building. Um, we continue to um, organize. We're, we're putting a lot of racking, putting some shelving, getting some cabinetry. We had a, um, a tough shed uh, erected today in the eastern courtyard to house um, a lot of the lawnmowers and weed whackers and chainsaws, and um, they're still figuring out some of the organizational stuff. But mostly, um, we're moved in, and that's all going really well. Um, uh, the staff finished a, a split rail fence out there today along the same line as the, um, the garage gate. And um, that's just something that, that we have on uh, either side of the path to prevent vehicles, unauthorized vehicles, from making their way into the panhandle path. And so um, they got that up today, and that's a, that's a nice, uh, nice thing to place. It looks really nice, kind of ties the area together. And we'll be doing a lot of uh, further landscaping in that spot now that we've reduced the fencing from the old temporary shop area. Um, and uh, once we get those shipping or cargo containers offloaded and get the rest of the temporary fencing down, we will be rehabilitating the park uh, in that section, um, replanting some of the grass, and also um, doing some different landscaping on some of the areas closer to the driveway and walking path. So look forward to that in the coming weeks and months as we um, you know, complete that and figure, figure out what we're going to do in that area. But so far, it's looking good, and uh, we're feeling really good about that. Um, the staff is also spending time getting the pool ready for the coming pool season. Uh, like I said before, the, the swim team is starting on March 1st. We also have a, a lifeguarding class coming up this weekend. So we've gotten uh, the pool uh, is getting up to temperature and we're getting it treated and making sure all of the pumps and filters and chlorine generators are working. So far, everything looks like it's doing great. I think this is actually uh, knock on knock on wood, but um, the the best uh, every, state everything's been in when I when I fired everything up after the winter. So I'm feeling very encouraged by that and optimistic. Um, one interesting. Uh, phenomenon that, that happened during the really, really heavy rains and the storms. We had so much groundwater, as I'm sure all of you know, and probably dealing with various issues of flooding in your garage and whatnot. But um, our uh, pump room pit, where we have a lot of the equipment, is down like five, six feet down in the ground. Um, uh, there was so much groundwater that we actually had the pit fill up with water to about uh, two feet, which I've never seen before, just seeping through the concrete. There's just so much water in the ground that we actually had water seep through the concrete up to have, have like two feet of standing water. And it put one of our sump pumps to the test and it failed. So we uh, were able to determine that uh, and replace it uh, before any equipment was compromised. Um, so um, kind of weird, like silver lining with all the storm water. Uh, better to have that happen then than have it be when we're like gushing
some more upcoming projects. We'll be doing some uh, more landscaping in the main park, as I mentioned, um, and some new plantings out of Creekside Park, uh, getting rid of the cargo containers and continuing to move into the new shop. So uh, that's my update. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions or want to hear about anything I did not touch on. Thank you. Thank you. Very thorough. I have questions, but I'll let everybody else go first. Bill, Lisa, Chris, Kelly. Um, thank you very much, Luke. That's a huge job. We appreciate it. Um, I guess I would like to voice the questions that some of us were emailed today. Um, I guess I'm going on the assumption that the trailers and the trucks are there because we're still moving into the facility and those will be housed back by the facility once everything is really, really done. Yeah, so um, uh, just to answer some of the points that came up uh, in some of that correspondence earlier today. Um, so there's some equipment being stored uh, temporarily on the side of the building. That's that's all. That was all just there as we were making room for some different things and has since been moved even before some of those emails went through today. Um, as far as the trailers and trucks, um, depending on what we're doing and where we're doing it, um, you know, sometimes we're parking the truck inside the, the container, or I'm sorry, inside the, the maintenance facility, inside the fence, sometimes it's parked on the street, sometimes it's um, parked at the community center, it kind of depends on what we're working on and what, what project is at hand um, and what's in the trailer or the truck. So. Um, the goal is to, be, is to house as much of our equipment and tools inside the, the facility and the courtyards as possible, um, but that's not always going to be physically feasible, um, just depending on what's going on and what we, what you know, what project is at hand. So um, right now we do have uh, a couple trailers living on the street, just at the end of the driveway, um, which has been the case for a number of years now, even before we started um, work on the new maintenance uh, facility, um, and we'll probably continue to make use of that as needed. But our goal is to definitely house as much equipment as possible um, within the, uh, the new maintenance facility as, as we can. And so um, uh, we definitely are not fully. 100% uh, organized. We still have a lot of stuff uh, on the, you know, spread out as we're finishing racking, shelving, cabinetry, and we just got a new shed completed today in the eastern courtyard that we'll be moving a lot of equipment into. So uh, we'll definitely see um, a reduction in, in anything housed outside of the facility, but um, I don't want to fully commit to never seeing any uh, um, evidence of the parks maintenance um, staff or, or equipment um, in the future, but we'll, we'll do our best to keep everything uh, behind. <coughs> Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead, Bill. Along those lines, uh, from what I read of the emails, the first email to you, Luke, that you answered, seemed to be the person was bothered by the fact that it could attract more commercial vehicles spending the night on Miller Creek Road and yeah, it's just not going to happen. It's not an overpass that is easily accessible from both sides of the freeway to move your vehicle. I don't know. I, I... Well, I, I just to speak to that. Um, like I said before, uh, the timeline of the parks maintenance facility project doesn't uh, fully align with how long that um, the, the staff has been utilizing that area of Miller Creek Road for in several years before the park maintenance facility project started. And as well as down, you know, they're using the parking lot of the community center in, in areas that we want. We're not trying to leave um, vehicles sitting in one spot, you know, for a long time, but uh, it's an area that's, that's used out of necessity. And we've never seen um, commercial vehicles being, being parked in that area aside from the ones that we use thus far. So. No, it was. <clears throat> Even the old shed, and I use that term loosely with the uh, vinyl roof, um, there was never a vehicle parked in that shed ever. So they were always outside. They were on ground. So Right, yeah. I mean, there was uh, before the new facility, um, there was always equipment parked uh, throughout that, that whole area. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was a, a major reduction in any visible parks maintenance equipment, vehicles, et cetera, yeah. um, with the new setup, which we're well, really I, excited about. I just think someone was jumping the gun, that's all. Well, I think that part of it was the way that we had planned it was that at, at close of day, right, when everybody was leaving, the things would be behind the fence. Not that during the day when the guys are using things, doing things, moving things around, that all that would be behind closed fences. That's, you know, you can't do your job properly if you stay within those little bounds. But at the end of the day, instead of having things out and about um, to be vandalized, it's behind our closed gates. Like, that's how I remember us talking about this. And yeah, that's, absolutely. That's definitely, uh, and that's definitely our goal. I just don't, uh, it's not always going to be feasible for 100% of our yeah. equipment to be within that area physically, but, um, uh, but you know, especially we can get back there, we will, and, and, and as we can, and yeah. take as many measures as we can to keep everything protected and safe from um, vandals. Absolutely. And I guess I had a question about um, how much longer do we think that it's going to take us to before we can have those extra things taken away. The containers yeah. in the park, um, we have a number of um, op options for, for offloading those. So we're still we're working with a couple different, just we're trying to sell those. And okay. um, we have a few different interested parties. And so we're working on logistics and just getting that figured out. Um, and then as soon as we have that nailed down, we'll be able to get those out of there and we'll also remove all that fencing and then there'll be yeah. a little bit of rehab on the, on the, you know, the landscaping in the park there. But um, we pursue it happening very, very quickly. Okay, perfect. Hopefully by the next meeting, so we don't have to have this discussion over and over. Um, I have one thing. Um, not that I want to be inundated with emails and not that I really don't mind that I wasn't on that email. But if, I feel sometimes that maybe email should be shared. So, and if somebody has a discussion with all of us, that we're all understanding the topic. So, we're happy to forward you the. Uh, any, any I just felt really out. Of, thank you. Like I felt really out of the loop during this whole conversation, where I don't think, and I'll just add my two cents. I don't think it's really feasible to put a double axle trailer behind a fence every day to rehook it up. To like, I think just common knowledge of how big an axle or that trailer is to go behind a fence every day isn't practical. So. Thank you. And then I would also follow that up, Kathleen, that uh, if somebody sends me an email and asks that it could share it with the board, I share it with the board. Um, you know, so it's, it, it is, uh, I'll just leave it at that. No, no, yeah. I know you do. I just think that, I think the more the request is if there's three of you guys on there, then maybe all five of us should be on there, would be more the request. I'm not, it's not for you, Eric. I'm not like pounding on you. I'm just saying like, if the majority of us are on there, then maybe all of us should be on there. I will forward you the email next time, unless you want me to share your email with this number. I actually don't want you to forward it, uh, Sivan. Leave that up to me, please. Okay. Thank you. So it's just a request. Yeah, no, I mean, leave that up to me just to avoid any board member communications on that level. All right. I think, again, really, moreover, I would say, if, especially if it's going to be discussed in a board meeting, there should be content that all board members have read, no matter what the context. Okay. My fault on that one. I apologize. I didn't realize we didn't all get it until about 10 minutes before the meeting tonight. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't even realize I was missing something until I was missing it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> is, it <laughs> is it also so, safe to say that the new maintenance facility is not getting named after someone? 
Uh, that was news to me. I, I don't, the new, the new minister I don't, is not, I don't know how that not person... named after anybody uh, in plaque form or any signage that uh, I, I am authorizing. Can we just call it maintenance facility? All right, I'm going to move on from this. That would be I, I, there's I, a lot of inaccurate statements made. There's, there is, that's, that's that's, let's, let's move on from that email. Um, I'm super excited to hear, Luke, that we're having lifeguard training. I looked at the weather though when you said that. That's going to be really freaking cold. Um, uh, no, you know, Suman, the best <laughs> lifeguards get trained in the rain. I'm one of them. And uh, so it's, it's like a good omen. I, got, I got trained in an indoor pool at my high school. It was nice and warm. So during school hours, which was amazing, I actually took a class and got credit and got trained. But anyways, I digress. Um, super excited that hopefully that means that although I love seeing our staff <coughs> lifeguarding, I'm really excited that maybe we won't be paying them to lifeguard this year. So yeah, no, that's always crossed. the goal. Uh, being open at the middle of the day on school days when, when the majority of your staff are high school and college yeah. uh, kids that are in school all day. It's just nature of the beast. Um, I, I've done you know some some stints out at the pool during the spring uh, during, during the weekdays since I started here, and it's just it's just part of the part of the spring season. But we um yeah we're recruiting right now for um for those shifts specifically and just trying to make sure we have some people in place. But um, you'll, you'll probably see some combination of out there. A oh bit. okay. Uh, and then I did just walk the whole um new maintenance facility area and I get like 5:15, 5:20 today. Everything was behind fences, cleaned up looking gorgeous for the public and i was super impressed so thank you and thank the guys for um everything they're doing Absolutely. and john paul the pool season is not the pool season without him there. i don't like, i can't even remember pool season without seeing him on the deck doing something so excited to have you back um no matter what twists and turns are going on with life we're, we're excited to have you here so all right anybody else have any comments from the board luke do you have anything else you want to say nope thank you so much. all right um anybody else in the public no all right are there any um board members items of interest and in, or requests for future agenda items for next month or the month after go ahead bill I'm wondering if it's too soon to push for the pancake breakfast on 4th of July. Um, well, the issue with the pancake breakfast is, you know, that was primarily organized and staffed in large part through the volunteer the program, not through the actives, by the, by the, through the volunteer program. So it's, uh, when, when that has gone away, I don't think you're going to find a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, I don't want to speak for them, but I don't think you're going to find a lot of interest or enthusiasm from the active duty firefighters to organize and put that together. That was a volunteer driven event. What about asking the fire commission if they want to rally? <laughs> I was going like to ask Bill if he wants to head a committee. <laughs> so I okay. think you and I are on the same page as Sucklin running this, but I don't think it's the fire commission. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to put it out there. Um, I, don't mind, I don't mind putting it out there, but I don't think that they're going to be, I can probably guarantee you Ron won't, but I don't, I don't think I'll want to run it. Okay. Bill. Right. Eric's it just sitting there smiling. I'll, <laughs> I'll check the temperature of it, but I, okay. I can already tell you the pulse of the on-duty crews. Um, not every one of them is individuals, but the, as a collective whole, there's no interest in them keeping that going, uh, which is unfortunate and sad. Uh, but again, this was always something that was kind of uh, spearheaded by the volunteer department and the volunteer uh, battalion chiefs that were in there. Greg Stilson played a big role in it. Um, I know John Serrat, who was on the commission, played a big role in it. Uh, I'm happy that we were able to kind of keep the Santa Claus tradition alive because that was always driven by the volunteer department as well. But uh, I, uh, as, as nice of an event as it is, I, I think I, I'll ask. Okay, perfect. Um, so our, I'm, before I adjourn us, I'm going to say that the next date is March 14th, 2023. Everybody. We're going to be in person, so no more seeing each other's living rooms. I'll be excited to see everybody. Um, Eric, are we going back to the room that is used as the preschool? It'll room? be in the classroom, in the community in the classroom. Room. Okay, so everybody will see you there, and we'll make sure that when we send this out, it says that we will be in person. And I'm excited to see everybody. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And um, on that note, so motion to adjourn. No, no, I got a question. Wait, go, wait go. go ahead, though. No, are we going to have uh, a sheriff there? Um, so Eric, I know there's one. Yes, so party I, that loves to get out of control. Eric and I have discussed this. We are going to start off with no sheriff. Okay. We have discussed it with the sheriff. He knows that we are going back to being in person. And right, Eric, and he's just aware of the situation. And we will move forward um, and reassess after the first meeting. Um, there will be the same rules as always of three minutes, and we will move on and we will adjourn the meeting if there are not adjourn. We will what is the word? Pause the meeting. Take if, a recess. Take a recess. That's the word. Um, if we are being interrupted and we're unable to conduct the meeting, we will take a recess for a few minutes and try to uh, regroup. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, then we will move forward on that. But I'm hoping that this um, break that we had of being on Zoom might uh, break the cycle. We'll see. All right, I go ahead. Can... I know I'm trying to be optimistic. Let me just put it this way. Chris, you had a question. Nope, you just answered it. All right, uh, we, we, will have, we will have a three-minute timer thing, so it will be very obvious. And we'll continue um, recording meetings. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, a one-still-shot camera, so we'll go back to our very old-school method of recording the meetings. Uh, and it'll take a little bit longer to get them processed and up onto YouTube for public viewing, but uh, there'll still be a, a recorded record of every uh, board meeting. Thank you, Eric. I forgot to mention that. And um, come as you are. If you choose to mask, great. If you choose not to mask, great. And uh, we'll see everybody there. All right, is there a motion? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? No, we don't need a second. Okay. I guess everyone's saying. Uh, you All right. second vote. You can, you, you're, you're the chair. You can adjourn the meeting. All right. I adjourn the meeting. It's 845. Go spend some time with your significant oh. others or stuffies, whatever, whatever floats your boat for the night. Yay. Thanks. I have a seven-year-old and nine-year-old, right? Stuffies are a big thing in our house still. The significant other part.